All right there, you lot. Hope you're all well. Hope you've been enjoying this weather wherever you are. You might be in a different country for all I know, but in England it's been quite warm and reasonably nice. But I'm here for a reason, as you've probably seen by the title. And I've got myself one of these Thunderpole T3000s. Now, it's just literally arrived today. I had it on pre-order, and I'll explain more in a minute when we go in the shack and have a look at it. There's a bit of a rattle in there, so it's a bit concerning. But we'll go in the shack and have a look, and I'm sure you lot are excited as I am. All right there, you lot. We're on the, on the bench in the shack, and this is what you get when you whenever you order anything from Thunderpole. You always get a little leaflet kind of thing. I like to keep these for sort of memories, you know. I put them in a little, I put them in like a little folder. So in 40 years time, I can look at it and go, bloody hell, this is what Thunderpole was selling. And, and you know, and that's what, how much they were and things, you know. So I always keep them. This leaflet that come with this one though, doesn't have the T3000 on it. <laughs> I thought they would have had a new leaflet with a T3000 on it, but I haven't. Anyway, the reason we're here, the Thunderpole T3000. Now we're gonna look through the box a lot of people say to me, why are you looking at the box? No one is interested in the box. But you don't realise a lot of time and effort and money spent on packaging and boxes. So you need to pay attention to the box because, you know, there's a lot of effort in there. These are very nice boxes. Any box that a Thunderpole comes in, I do like. It's a nice box. You know, it's smooth. It seems to be a well-made box. Um, unfortunately, because they don't actually pack them in, a, in another box, they just put them in a jiffy bag. This one's a bit smashed out, but... That's, uh, that's not, not, not a problem. So on the box, on the front of it, you get a picture of the radio. Um, it tells you all the uh, bands that it does, I, I, I assume. Uh, 27 megahertz FMA mobile transceiver T3000. Thunderpole CB radio. There's a picture of the radio, obviously. Multi-frequency, including UK and European. Um, powerful front speaker. We'll be testing that, because a lot of speakers are rubbish. So we'll be testing how powerful the speaker is. 12 or 24 volt operation, AM FM modes, auto manual squelch, large 20, large 7 color LCD. Uh, that's on the front of the box. On the side of the box, you've got a few more features that it tells you that it does. Multi frequency, we just read all that, preset to UK band, 4 watt out of our RF power. It's only a CB radio, so it only does 4 watts. It's not an SSB radio or anything like that. You know, uh, you got uh, digital signal meter, dimmable colours, scan 9, 1 and 19, 2 pin accessory socket in box, key lock, also locks the mic buttons. You can't see that, can you, because of the reflection from the light. Front speaker, auto squelch, cigarette lighter already fitted, which is interesting. Not a lot of radios come with the cigarette lighter already fitted. So on the back of the box, if I don't get the reflection of the light, and some of you not probably noticed I'm not a professional with a professional studio. I'm just your average plonker in a shack. Anyway, here's the radio. You've got on and off button and all that stuff. It tells you everything it does there. You get a radio, you get the microphone button, you get a power lead, you get a cigarette light already, you get a din mount, you get din keys, you get bolts, you get bracket, you get a microphone holder and you get the radio itself. Sadly, you don't get the pretty lady um, that's on the box. I'd like to know who she is. She probably works in the offices somewhere in Thunderbolt. Or probably not. She might just be an actor. Now, sadly, these are made in China, but luckily, they seem to be made in a good part of China because Thunderpole stuff is always very good, even though it is made in China. So, in the box, you get your ordinary instruction manual. I'll have a look in that in a minute to see whether it makes any sense. It should do because it's Thunderpole, and you know, like I said, they're usually pretty good stuff. You get the new revised microphone when i did the review of the t800 the microphone was a little tiny one i know i should have got it out to show you but i haven't um and a little tiny little tiny one very light um it felt very plasticky and didn't feel very good so i said that and obviously a few other people have said the same so they seem to have redesigned the microphone for all of their radios now and this comes with a redesigned microphone it's much better than the old one we'll go through it all in a minute uh, and then you get your microphone clip and your thumb screw thingamajigs for your bracket. You get your power lead, power wire that's already got the cigarette um, socket fitted. And you get your DIN keys there um, for taking it out. Now I will explain why you get that in a minute. There's your bracket. It's a plastic bracket, not a metal one. But these days everything's going plastic, isn't it? So you just got to deal with it. Um, obviously cheaper than plastic. It would, have been, it would have been nice to have a metal one. I didn't realise that was going to be plastic. So that's all you get in the box. Obviously you get the radio itself. 
So we'll put that box over there. Now, the radio itself. You get your little cage that you would, you know, your ding cage. Now, this radio is aimed primarily at uh, mobile people. Um, you know, like people that want to put this in their cars. Because obviously, normal CB radio, little square box or rectangle box, you can put it in your shack, you know. You can put it in your car anywhere you want. Obviously, you can still have this on your shack. You can have it on your bench if you wanted to. But it's, they told me that it's aimed sort of more so at sort of 4x4, four four, you know, Land Rovers and any other off-road car or anything like that. Because that's, I think that's, I think that's mainly who they're selling CBs to, off-roaders. Um, so there we go. There's the radio. I'll tell you what, it's nice and heavy. It's very nice and heavy. It's made out of metal. Model T3000, 27 megahertz CB radio, 12, 24 volt DC input, made in China. So, there's your DC power socket there. You've got a mic socket at the back, by the looks of things. Oh, they blocked that out. Alright, you just get a little rubber grommet over that. You, for some reason, they've put a mic, mic hole there with no socket on it, so they've just put a grommet over it. I thought that was an ex uh, a rear a rear mic socket as well as the front one for a minute. Then I thought you'd get both, but you don't. You just get the front one. You get the external speaker socket there, and your antenna um, socket to put your PL259 in. On the front, you got your that's your microphone socket. You got your volume on and off as well. Uh, Vox and lock. Obviously, these are self-explanatory, but for those of you that don't know. Uh, you've got your colour and dim, your 919 and scan, mode and band there. And then you've got your big screen, you've got your channel up and down, and you've got your squelch and auto squelch. The knobs feel alright, the squelch one feels a little bit sort of... I don't know if you can hear that. That one feels a bit weird. That one's nice and smooth. That one don't make any noise. This one... Feels a bit... Don't know. It, it just... You know, for for an eighty nine pound radio, it's you know, or ninety nine pound. Sorry, I should say by the way that although I did have to pay for this out of my own money, um, I bought and paid for it with my own money. It was discounted when I said I wanted to do a review on it. I did get a discount on it, um, so you know, make of that what you will. But I did pay for it. I didn't get it for free, so. Um, make of that what you will. But the radio itself feels very nice. It looks nice. I do like that. Um, what's the power cable like? Hopefully it's good quality. Power cable, a plug. It's weird that they put a little plug on it like that, I suppose. They've, they've gone for this sort of um, plug. I forget what it's called now, but this, uh, that plug has got a name, but I forget what it's called. Anyway, it's weird they've gone for one of those plugs. They've obviously thought, you know, instead of the, the ordinary, I haven't got one to show you. Oh, I, ain't got one, I ain't got one knocking around to show you. But the ordinary CB radio sort of plug is either a 2-pin or a 3-pin, sometimes 4-pin or whatever. Um, but it's usually a black plug and it's usually just rectangle and goes in. But they've gone for one of these ones for this radio, which is, you know, different. The cable itself feels alright and so does the, the, the uh, signal. These thing keys for your cage. I personally won't be using this cage. Um, but there we go. Thumb screws and things for the bracket. Microphone, very nice. I do wonder if the uh, I think that's an LED on there. I wonder if that's going to light up on this radio because they sent me um, one of these microphones to put with my T800, as I said, you know, because I've got the older microphone and I asked them and they so they sent me one of these new ones to use with the T800. Um, the video on the microphone comparison is coming up, by the way. Um, I'll be comparing the two microphones. So if you've got the older style microphone, you might want to go and buy one of these new ones, perhaps. Um, you know, I would definitely recommend it, but I'm going to do a full comprehensive review video on the two microphones. So if you're interested in that. But the LED, if that is an LED, it looks like it is, doesn't light up with the T800. Um, so I wonder if it's going to light up with uh, this radio as soon as it you know, comes with it from new.
Anyway, very good microphone. And then we get the instruction manual. We're going to plug it in in a minute, by the way, in case some of you are getting a bit frustrated. I'm going to plug it in, we'll go through it all, see what it's like. You know, this is the first time I've ever opened the box up and had a look at it, so me and you are going to learn together and we'll see what it's like. I've got my antenna um, wire here, ready to rock and roll. Hopefully there'll be someone on, so I can have a little bit of a chat and see what it sounds like. Um, but the, the manual is just your ordinary manual, you know, you don't really need to know a lot about it. It tells you... Um, how to do the antenna, check operation of the radio, tells you how to sort of do it all up, you know, but it's only a few pages, because let's be honest, hooking a CB up is fairly straightforward, you know, when, if, as long as you've got a system, an aerial and everything, that's already SWR and all that, but anyway, I'm going to plug this in now, and see what it's like. Right, hopefully we can all see that, I think we can, the way that I've got, because I've got RG213U coax, it's so bloody stiff, Trying to put it in the back of the radio there and it's just pushing it around the table. <laughs> anyway, power supply is on, antenna's in the back. Let's turn it on and see what we get. Alright, so it looks like the auto squelch is already on. It comes on um, on channel 1 um, in a red display. Right, so you've got auto squelch, looks like it's already on. There it is. Yeah. I don't know where the signal meter is. All right, okay. Um, box and lock, box, flashing, color, green, purple, just like a blue, teal or something. Uh, green, blue, nothing. Oh, it's different blue, all right. What one's best? I think the red shows up best on this, on this, on this camera screen anyway. I'm hoping it's showing up best for you. Scan nine, nineteen. I just scan and hold it down. There you go. A scan in there. Uh, let me stop that. Seventeen. Channel up and down. Oh, scan it again. Get rid of that. Hold it down and get rid of the scan. Channel down. Channel up. By the way, I forgot to mention you got channel up and down, and squelch auto squelch on the top of the microphone. Uh, so you can press that to put your auto squelch on. And press that to get rid of it and you can go up I mean you can go down and you can go up so let's go to the one nine and see if anyone's about on the one nine hello anyone out there on the one nine I thought there, I thought there weren't. There should be some noise. I didn't have the uh, antenna on. The, I didn't have the radio on the right antenna. I had it on the wrong antenna. <laughs> that was a good start. Here we go. Let's try again. Anyone out there on the one nine? Hello. Anyone out there on the one nine? Hello. You'll notice that uh, the signal meter down here. That's the amount of noise I've got at the moment. It's a particularly noisy time of night. I don't usually get a lot of noise, but this time in the evening I do. Uh, there's this digital signal meter. You're obviously on the UK band at the moment, and we're on FM. Um, I didn't. Just, and it goes to EU. Uh, I'm going to go on EU. AM. And back to UK FM. So you can't do UK AM. You can only do EU um, FM and EU AM. But we're on the one nine, so we should be. Um, I don't know why the PTY is flashing up there. I don't know what. I have to look in the manual for that. Hello, anyone out there on the one nine? Hello, a quick copy and a recheck. Oh, that's good. Notice that LED doesn't light up when you key. Don't know if it's supposed to. Anyone out there on the one nine? Hello. I'm just playing around with this. Um, I've not heard anyone on any channel. Well, I've just been skipping around, sort of, off camera. Um, if you hold this down, that dims it, and it comes back up again. I personally, I quite like the purple. Um, well, it's kind of showing up all right on this lens. Um, I don't know why that's flashing. Pty. 
Um, I've had to look in the manual, in the instruction manual, there's nothing on it whatsoever. So it's, I don't know why it's flashing. When something flashes, usually it means something. And maybe some of, some of you lot let me know uh, why that flashes on there. It's flashing, it flashes all the time. So there's obviously a reason for it flashing. So I'll have to look into that one. So I'm just going to go and see if I can find a contact and we can see what it actually sounds like and try and get a rig, uh, signal report. Oh, right, I've been playing around with this. Um, and I've noticed as well, one of the good things is because it's a complaint that I have with a lot of radios. It's quite annoying. Um, I never used to, but I, I have recently gotten into the habit of using the 1-9 button to go to the 1-9. Because where I am, everyone seems to congregate, uh, congregate around the 1-9. I know the 1-9 is a calling channel. Everyone chats on it and everything, so... I got to the one nine, then I like to press it, and it, I like it to go back to another another channel, one I've sort of got sort of preset, so I can sort of I usually like to sort of go to two five because that used to be our channel where we all used to talk around here, so I kind of I like having a radio set to the two five, then I can go to the one nine, and if it's a bit busy on there, I can just say hey you know what let's let's go to the two five, boof. There we go. That's the way I like to do it. Um, now I like it when it does that, but also if you turn the radio off, right, and then you come back to it, it's already back on the two five. It's on the channel that you last had it on, um, which is good because some radios go back to one nine or go back to nine. Uh, they usually go either to nine or one nine nineteen. So I like radios that go back to the channel you were last on, which is very good. I, I like that a lot. Um, that's uh, definitely a good thumbs up for me on that one, because otherwise it's annoying. You know, you could sometimes this, you know, you could have your channel what you chat to your friends on, um, because I, I'm a hobbyist radio. I don't have it for. Um, I need to communicate with it, but I talk on the radio to my friends instead of a telephone. I don't use a telephone. You see, so we use radios around here. So it's good to have it on the channel you you like it on because otherwise you know you could turn your radio off you could come to it whenever you want to you know you get in your car or if you got it on the, in the shack or whatever you turn it on and then you got to mess around going up, up and down channels to find your channel again but it's already on it so good thumbs up thunderpole well done on that one i like that one a lot i've just had a brainwave um pty of course it flashes when you're when you're pressing the um um the what's it button the one the one nine and 19 because this class is an emergency channel it's not an emergency anymore you you have an emergency and you call out on channel nine now no one's going to be bothered but because it ain't an emergency anymore but it used to be um so obviously it's not flashing now i went, well, I went to the channel two five a minute ago i'm thinking that pty is not flashing then i thought you idiot of course it ain't it only flashes when you press on the emergency button so that's why that was flashing because i had that on um anyway that's enough of that so that's, that's I worked that one out. It's probably is in the manual. I probably skipped over it, but there we go. If you could give me a quick radio check, please, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, mate. Uh, coming over radio five, about seven pound mark. Where back are you? Oh, lovely. Yeah, I'm just near South End in the southeast coast of Essex. Um, you're coming over here with sort of signal three, uh, radio five, but uh, good audio. Oh, lovely. We're down in. Uh Oh, oh yeah, whereabouts? If you don't mind me asking. Um, just off of Crane Farm Road. Anyone out there, Dave? You out there, Dave? Hello, hello. Ah, hello, mate. Right, I'm um, I'm recording you at the moment there, Dave, because I want you to let me know what this radio sounds like. It's uh. A Thunderpole T3000, brand spanking new from Thunderpole. Is what's it sounding like to you, Dave? Well, you give me nine pound, nine pound, and a, a crystal radio five. Oh, lovely! Cheers, Dave. Yeah, I've got it from him to review. Um, give it a test and give it a review. See what it's like. Um, it's brand spanking new. You know, they've only just designed it. It's completely brand new. You know, it's not like an update of an old one. It's completely brand new, there, Dave. That's right, Dave. Yep, everything, every single thing is um, stock. Stock microphone, which has been redesigned. 
um, and the radio itself is quite small you know it's it's thin uh, it's designed to be put in where a head unit would usually go in a car they're aiming it primarily at mobile users now you know well it's certainly fair to right there Bill. what's the other one you want to try out Right, there we go. I just had a good old chat with, um, that was Dave. Um, because I, I found that other that other breaker, Tony. I found him, he was alright, but I couldn't find anybody else to give me another report. I like to get more than one. So I gave me mate a message, a text message, he come on there. And I've been chatting to him for about half an hour. And I tend to do reasonably long overs, to be honest. And it, it's it's hot to the touch. You can't really touch the back of that heat sink. But let's be honest, if, any, if you buy this... If you buy this, you're probably going to be wanting to put it in your car. You're probably going to be going off-road. And you're not going to be doing overs that are two, three, four minutes long, are you? Um, you're just going to be doing sort of quick, sort of two, three or five second overs. So, yeah, it's going to be perfectly good. So, let's wrap it all up then, shall we? Have a look. It's bloody hot, that is. It's been sitting there for about five minutes now. 45... Been sit 47 it's the degrees centigrade days yeah it's been sitting there for about five minutes and uh, I went to pick it up and I was like bloody hell that hurt my hand it's bloody hot <laughs> 47 so yeah if you're gonna be having long sort of chats um, you might want to make sure you get a fan on it get plenty of ventilation I mean it was just sitting there on the bench you know like that uh, that's how it was sitting uh, that heat sink is pretty nice that heat sink is but again like I said it's not designed as a, a long chatting sort of radio it's designed more for just putting it in the car and having a quick you know sort of like yeah I'm just around the corner you know and where are you and things like that you know very short overs all right then you lot so really I'm quite impressed with this um, I am pleased with it. I think it's nice. I notice it don't come with a screen protector or nothing on it. Um, a little bit. I'm a little bit worried for me personally about how hot it gets. But like I keep saying, it's not designed for the hobbyists like me. Whereas I, I talk to my friends um, flat out, even when I'm mobile, I'm talking quite a lot. So it will get hot. But it's a nice radio. Very well built. It does seem very well constructed and sturdy even though it is made in China um, I can't really I'm not really sure why they've got a microphone socket on the back that they plugged out that's a bit strange but obviously you can you can have that on your bench you can put the bracket on it you know and you can stand it on your bench if you want it in the shack but it's designed to be in a car so that all you'll see is the front of it there you know there's no back to it that's that's the whole point of it and I think it's very good I do, and the new redesigned microphone that they that they're putting out. But they put this out of all their Thunderpole radios now, as far as I believe. Um, but the LED, I thought there was an LED on the front, but it turns out it doesn't look like it is an LED because it doesn't light up. I thought it was going to light up when you key, but it doesn't. But it works well. Um, I've had good reports on this microphone with the T800. People say it's very clear. Dave said that the uh, this radio coupled with this microphone, uh, my mate there, Dave, he said it's clear. So I usually give him sort of like a signal seven to nine from where he is. He's about 15 mile away from me. So I had a contact there obviously 15 mile. He's, he's just over 15 miles from me to him in as the crow flies. Um, doing the 4 watts because obviously like I said this is a 4 watt radio the legal limit in the UK in England is 4 watts for CB so you won't buy a CB radio that do more than 4 watts you can buy a sideband radio that do 12 because that's the limit but or more than 12 actually but for a CB one like this is basic basic CB 4 watts so gives you an idea um, of sort of what it can be like obviously that's home base and this is designed for mobile so the next test that I'm going to do this was just like the unboxing and initial first look and short sort of review on it and what I think about it initially when I first open up the box because first impressions do matter and I think they've pretty much got it 
very good. They've got that pretty much nailed, you know, um, for first impressions. But I'm going to go and put this in, in my van. Uh, and I'm going to use it for a, a week or so and see how it performs. Um, coupled with a mobile aerial. And then when I, I'm going to do a video on that. You know, that will be coming up in a couple of weeks because I need about a week to make it. And I'll show you the setup on the van, the aerial that, it's used, that I'm using with it, and how I've got the radio set up. And, uh, you know, you'll be able to see what it performs like. And I'll be able to see what it performs like because this, as you, as you know, is brand spanking new. It was on pre-order, and I'm one of the first people to have it. So, there we go, my friends. I hope that helped you somewhat for the first sort of look of this radio and what it's like. And uh, if you're thinking about buying one, I, I would recommend it. But first of all, let's go and see what it's like in, in the car out and about. So, thanks for watching. I hope you stick around, and I'll catch you on the next one, dudes. Take care, won't you? I hope you like that you lot and if you stuck around long enough to see the end of this video then that's very good of you. If you're interested in older radios, the next video, one of the next videos coming up is going to be looking at this big pile of old radios that I got given today. I don't know what's in here, there's all sorts, I haven't really looked through it or anything. So there's older radios on this channel as well, um, there's plenty of that coming up. So if you have stuck around and you're seeing this then fantastic you lot, there's going to be loads of good stuff coming up. It's bloody hot. It's bloody, well it, it might not be for some of you lot, it's 33 degrees at the moment, sweating like a pig sitting in there doing that review for you lot. I was absolutely sweating. <laughs> and with the heat coming off the radios and everything, blimey. But yeah, I'm looking forward to going through that, so if you like the older stuff, just stick around for the next couple of days, because I'm going to go through all of these individually. Look, we've got an old Maxcom 4E, God knows what we've got, Fidelity something or other. It's like a Uniden 200 or something in there. And plug them all in individually and test them all. And if they need repairing, we'll repair them. Nice one. Like I said earlier, take care, you lot, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.